Hi friends, welcome to Stay Stitching. My name is Carla and I am glad you are here. This will be my fourth short video on recent fabric purchases. And this one is a thrifted fabric haul. And so I'm gonna run you through this. Now I don't, I was about to say I don't buy a lot of fabric anymore. <laughs> Joy's laughing downstairs. I really don't go on fabric benders very often, but sometimes I do, which you just which witnessed if you watch those other videos. But um, I am not buying nearly as much fabric in thrift stores as I used to because I'm only now shopping for myself since we closed the uh, fabric store. And I can't use all that I see that I know is good. And so those of you who are, you know, you wonder, where do you find this? How do you, you just have to go and you just have to look and you have to just make a run through of all of your local thrift stores whenever you get the chance. And you have to discover where they put the fabric and you have to go straight there and look it over. Also, don't forget garage sales and especially don't forget estate sales and auctions. So those are the places where I would when I was running the store and before I ran the store and right now where I buy my vintage fabric. Um, now what I'm showing you today, I don't know that there's anything truly vintage in here because that isn't necessarily what I was looking for when I was buying this. Actually, I wasn't looking for anything, but when it shows up and I realize I can really use that right now, I will pick it up. So I got two huge pieces of satin. One in this orangey, this one almost has a shift to it. Now I know that, you know, a lot of shiny fabric would almost have a shift to it, but is in this marigold color. Um, and there's a bunch of it, like five, six, seven yards. And I just bought this for a uh, winter coat lining because it's slippery and it's beautiful. And um, this will go, it will add a bright flash of color on, you know, almost any kind of coat that you would be making. The other one that I got for coat linings will not add a bright flash of color. This one is a crepe back satin not like the other one. The other one was a straight satin weave. So this one has some texture to it. Ooh, this one's pretty. Look at this gorgeous cafe au lait. Now I have some of that leopard print fabric from Robert Kaufman that I made the fig and needle presswood skirt out of. I have some of that left over and I want to either make a denim jacket, a lined denim jacket. I have a pattern from Butterick. Um, I don't know if it's still out there or not, um, but it's gotten really great reviews at on pattern review. And some people have put zippers down the front instead of the denim jacket buttons, um, but it's a lined denim jacket. And I just thought that I haven't held them up next to each other yet, but I'm pretty good with color, usually spot on, not a hundred percent, but usually. And I thought this might be just beautiful on the inside of that leopard skin. If not, I can certainly use it for something else. It's stunning fabric. Also at the thrift store, um, at a different time, at various different times, separated by a year or two, I wound up buying an entire bolt of flannel backed ivory satin which is about $15 a yard. You can buy it right now to line any coat that you want. And it comes in lots of beautiful colors. But um, I felt like that was a really big score. I got five or six or eight yards of that. And then I have also bought um, yards and yards of beautiful heavyweight ivory um, crepe back satin um, that I could use for the lining of all these coats. I have made a coat and I love that coat, but I've never lined anything yet. So I'm getting there. I'm just getting prepared. It's coming. It's coming. I'm going to do it. Okay. While I was there, I was thrifting with my uh, favorite thrifting pal. Well, besides Troy, he's my favorite person, but I have a pal 
one of my dearest friends, <coughs> and she's my favorite thrifting pal because she loves it as much as I do. She's like the queen. She gets fry boots, you know, for $8 or whatever. I mean, I get some good stuff, but um, she's literally the queen. I got this. This is beautiful cotton jersey in this eggplant, eggplanty plum color. And I just got this for me because I need winter knits. And there's, I'm going to say four yards here at least. And I paid $4 for this. Um, this we got at the Ark. I think everything from this trip was from the Ark. I don't think we went to the Goodwill. The Ark in Colorado Springs. Then the rest of this, oh, this is not fabric. This is a scarf I bought that's 100% silk. And I paid $1.99 for it. And those are my colors. And I just bought a brand new camel coat from Land's Inn. And wouldn't this look pretty with camel? Yeah, I gotta just hand wash that and then that'll be ready to go. Yep. I love that. One of these days I'm gonna really score. I'm gonna get like a $500 scarf for eight bucks or something. Okay, this I bought for pajama bottoms. This is just flannel. Just gonna wash it and make someone some pajama bottoms. I was, I just saw the price tag. This was $3. There's probably three yards here. This one is not as nice as that one. This one is a print, not a woven. Um, printed flannels, in my experience, are never as high quality as woven flannels. Um, they pill and they just don't last as long. This one was also $3. It's nice, nice print, but your wovens, if you're looking and you don't know a lot about fabric, you, you know, if you are shopping for flannel, look for flannels that are woven and not printed. And for the most part, you're gonna be coming up with a higher quality flannel. Now, um, I have a whole bolt of Robert Kaufman flannel that I bought for the store that is a print, and um, but it's Robert Kaufman flannel, so it's nice quality flannel. Now, I also have some Robert Kaufman flannel that is woven. Um, I have a, a crepe flannel and I have a cotton flannel, and both of those are far superior to the Robert Kaufman print, which is far superior to most flannels that you would pick up at Joanne and Hobby Lobby that are printed. Um, Flannels, a word of warning, flannels are very tempting, but they do not age well. Poor quality flannel does not age well. So be aware of that when you're shopping for flannel. And if you can afford it, um, you may want to try to get something that's, you know, a dollar or two or three more expensive per yard, you're gonna wind up with a better quality. But if you're just making yourself, you know, five pairs of new flannel pajama bottoms, do whatever. Okay, so here is another flannel. This one is very nice, it's very soft. It's woven, it's thin, but it's a beautiful plaid. It's not, <coughs> It's not like Robert Kaufman Durango flannel, which is like five times as thick as this. It's almost too hot to wear. Um, for pajamas, it's almost out of the question. Um, jackets and stuff like that for Kaufman's Durango flannel. But this is the perfect weight for um, pajama bottoms and it's a dollar, I paid a dollar 99 for it. This one's a print, see? You can tell, it's very easy to tell. A print from a woven, and um, they have this, printed flannel has a stiff, the stiff feeling of painted fabric, which is exactly what it is. Um, it's dyed fabric with these thick uh, painterly dyes, and um, they don't feel as nice on the inside either, but this was $3 for probably three yards. <coughs> this flannel is 
super high quality. This flannel is almost to, you know, my middle son lives in Kiel, Germany. This, if I make pajama bottoms out of this, this is what I will use. This is a heavyweight. This is a gorgeous fabric. I was trying to decide if this might be wool. Almost like a melton, like a thin melton. I think it's a super high quality flannel. I might do a burn test on that because if it's wool, I don't want to throw it in the washer um, in the same way that I would wash flannel. But I paid $4 for this and there's at least three yards here. Um, and so, and it is just lovely. This would make a really nice um, heavyweight overshirt. I think Wilson left here today with his friend wearing a t-shirt with a, I think they think it's the 90s. Um, he had on black high top Converse. He had on a, maybe leather, I can't remember if those are the leather ones. He had on Levi's. He had on some kind of t-shirt, probably a band t-shirt, a heavy flannel shirt, and then um, like a snowboarding coat on top of that. <laughs> Cracks me up. So anyway, that kind of over flannel shirt, this would be perfect for. Um, this one I'm going to have to think about. It's either going to be pajama bottoms for Skylar or some kind of heavy shirt. The heavy shirts are hard to wear except for as an overshirt. And Troy doesn't really wear flannel shirts as overshirts. And so what he winds up doing, um, one year I bought him a, um, a they call them um, chamois cloth shirts from um, Duluth Trading Company or Duluth. I don't know how you say that, but it's got really high quality men's clothing for men who work. And he can barely wear it. He wears that shirt once or twice a year because you can't wear it inside. And so I think that's kind of along the lines. That's what this is. This is like a flannel chamois almost. We have to get that shirt from Duluth and compare them. But anyway, I got this at a thrift store for $4, friends, for like four yards. So you can do it. You can find these things. I found beautiful vintage fabric that's 50 years old. And I found, you know, things like that, which is not vintage at all. Now this... I really love this is another woven and it's thin it's a thinner flannel and it's more loosely woven this is my favorite kind of flannel to sleep in it's incredibly soft there's no pills anywhere on here um, it's got a loose weave and it's woven and two or three yards probably three yards I don't think I buy it unless it's at least three yards because that's what you need to make pants um, and I paid three dollars for that. And then this one, this is another heavyweight flannel. This is a heathered flannel in this burgundy. <coughs> this is heavy like that green. And so this is another one. Maybe I'll make Skylar the green flannels, uh, pajamas, and Gabby, um, out of this uh, pretty burgundy. All right, that's it. That was my last thrifted fabric haul. So now adding to my 8 million yards of fabric that I already own, I have a hundred, no, 50 yards, 50 or 60 yards of new fabric. Troy's just shaking his head. You know, it wouldn't be so bad if I actually sewed like some of my friends out there. There's a lot of gals on YouTube who do a lot of fabric hauls and they sew their little fannies off and they earn it. I mean, yeah, why not buy a lot of fabric if you're doing a lot of sewing? And so I just need to catch up. I just need to catch up. So I hope you're all doing well. Thank you for hanging out with me. Or get into something useful like cheese. <laughs> Are you being cheesy? Come back here. This is my 56 year old husband. Today's his birthday. We're going to the cheese store for my birthday. Oh, are we? Okay. All right, better get ready. <laughs>